What's up, y'all? It's been one whole year, 12 months, and I'm ready to celebrate. What am I celebrating? Well, let's start at the beginning. One year ago, I was laid off from what I once considered to be a dream job, but that's not what we're celebrating. The journey I've been on since that moment has been a roller coaster. And none of that, or most of that, is not because searching for a job these days is a complete nightmare. It's because that moment gave me a rare opportunity to try to turn my side thing into my main thing. You see, what I've done is start a second career. I'm now in my early 50s, learning a whole new set of skills and a whole new approach to doing business. In 2022, I opened Standback Studio to provide photography services. My passion for the medium had grown a lot, and I thought it was a great way to earn some extra money and remain creative. It was never designed or intended to be something full time, at least not in the near future, maybe in retirement. I could be patient with growing my customer base and generating revenue. I could work really diligently to improve my technical skills without the pressure of immediately making money from them. A year later, shit changed and my plans had to too. My plans had to too? Now, 12 months later, I'm happily working with creative forward-thinking individuals, businesses, and organizations who need help growing through marketing strategies. And I also work with them to create visual content that positions them as experts in their field. Now I can hear you saying, Zuri, that's your elevator pitch. What does that mean? Well, I'll break it down a little bit for you, but what I wanna do is share with you the lessons I've learned in trying to start a business as a second career later in life. I call these my top five contradictory lessons of entrepreneurship as a second career. Why contradictory lessons? Well, in general, life is full of contradictions. We often call them choices, one thing or the other. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. And so the lessons I wanna share are things that you have to make judgments on at different stages of your growth. Let's start with the one that's the reason for this video. Celebrate your wins and your lessons. There are no losses, just lessons. One of the first ones you should pay attention to is what led you to make this switch. Were you retiring? Were you sick of a toxic environment? Were you just ready to do something different? For me, being laid off unexpectedly and not having a specific plan to make the switch right away, I did a lot of soul searching about whether it was time to make that switch or not. I've been in corporate America long enough to know how it works. I know what the signs look like and I know how hard it is for somebody like me at the stage of my career to find employment, especially at a time when there are massive layoffs happening. So although I didn't abandon a job search completely, I made sure I took the time to focus on building this business that I really wanted. All that energy and all that time I put in for someone else and all that money and all that recognition I was able to help others get, I should put that into myself. I should pour that into what I'm trying to do. And so that was the first lesson I took along this journey. And celebrating the wins are always easy. Sure, you wanna say I'm gonna celebrate when I make that first 100,000, first million, first 10 million, but usually you wanna celebrate each customer along the way, each successive step of progress you make along the way. You should celebrate those. Give yourself a reward. Allow yourself to bask in the beauty that is progress. Contradictory lesson number two. Define your niche. Niche? Niche. Define your niche, but don't restrict yourself. One of the things you'll come across a lot when doing research on how to start a business and be a successful entrepreneur is to define a very narrow niche of what you're gonna do and how you're gonna do it, and who you're gonna serve, and just become the best possible at doing that. There's nothing wrong with that advice. It actually makes a lot of sense. But it's also important to pay attention to what the marketplace needs, what your customers need, in order to round out your services so that they get maximum value for it. Maximum value for your customers means maximum revenue for you. So for me, I originally focused on photography. I wanted to be the best I could be at the photography services I offered. I narrowed down who I was gonna offer it to, and it was mildly successful. But what I quickly realized was there was one thing people really wanted, and another thing I thought they needed that I should add to the services I provide. The first one was video. Almost every request I got for photography services Someone also asked for video along the way. And it was something I avoided at first because I really just didn't think I could learn that skill well enough in time to offer it up. 
But I quickly realized I needed to do that in order to maximize the value that I could deliver to my clients and the revenue I could make from my business. With a little more examination, I recognized that their marketing and brand strategies really did not address the use of video and photography outside of some basic purposes. Now, having spent a significant portion of my career in marketing and branding, I felt like I was well positioned to offer that up to my clients. So I now have branding and marketing services as part of my services portfolio with an expertise in creating visual assets that position you as an expert in the marketplace. So when you're examining your business and trying to figure out what you want to offer as services, definitely define your niche, but be prepared to pivot and grow so that you can service the clients in the best way you know how. Contradictory lesson number three, don't tell other people your plans, but lean into your network. Now, this is definitely something that is dependent upon your personality and your fear of other people's opinions. There are going to be those who are naysayers no matter what you bring to them. There'll be others who are cheerleaders no matter how crazy you sound. And filtering through all of that feedback can be a lot. But at some point, it is important to lean in to your network, whether it's former colleagues, people you met at networking events, friends or family are also your network. And if you don't tell them what you're trying to do, they don't know how to help. And this is so much more pronounced when you're making a career switch. They've known you for so many years as the marketing person. And now you're saying, no, no, I'm a photography guy. They don't quite make that translation immediately. You probably have to tell them four, five, six, seven times. Oh, that's right. You're doing photography now. I do hold a lot of my ideas and draft plans close to the vest. I've been thinking about adding marketing and branding services for months before I really talked to anybody about it. So as you're making your switch and growing your business, definitely take time to plan in quiet and peace, but eventually share what you want to accomplish so that others can figure out how to help you. Contradictory lesson number four, do some free work to get your foot in the door, but know your value, don't undercharge and don't undercut other people in your industry. Now, this one's not quite contradictory, but definitely it depends on the stage of business you're in and the level of expertise you have. Not everyone is going to have an opportunity to do free work. It is something common in a lot of creative fields. I find that a lot in photography. It can be a great way to develop your skills and make connections in environments where maybe somebody wouldn't be willing to pay you at least as much as you feel you deserve. For me, I do it to build up portfolio, to try out new services. But once I feel like I have a service that's well-structured, I'm definitely charging what I expect to get paid. Proceed with caution. Clients do talk to each other. If they recommend you, make sure they're not recommending your free service or your cheap service. And finally, contradictory lesson number five. Be patient, but don't wait. Start right now. <laughs> now, this is another one that's not quite contradictory. It really is talking about two different things that I think are complementary in a way if you do them right. First, patience is necessary. You're not gonna grow this immediately unless you just have the best network and the best connections, results are not gonna come overnight. So patience in your planning, patience in launching, patience in looking for results is definitely warranted. However, don't let patience become procrastination. I often get caught up in trying to make sure things are perfect, that they are unimpeachable. Anything that I create or post or offer can't be questioned. And that's just ridiculous, right? But making that effort, planting that seed now will allow your business to grow organically and naturally over time. Most of the work I'm getting now is in response to things I did in the last six to 12 months. Hoping this video gets a response. There are gonna be times when you feel like you wanna quit. There are times when you feel like you're getting no response. It is the feast and famine cycle you often see in a small business. So be patient but get started now. Well, that's it for my five contradictory lessons of making a late career switch by starting a business after a layoff or something like that. Anyhow, I hope this was helpful. Maybe it gave you some insight. If you'd like to learn more about me and my business, you can check it out at www.standback.studio. Thanks for watching.